that, everybody. It's so nice to have an amazing opportunity to be right here leading song service to this amazing church. I just want to start off by saying that our God is amazing and that our God's grace is greater and is stronger. Let's just, let's pray. Lord, thank you for your presence tonight. Thank you for letting all of these people here know the grace and the love of you. Thank you for them being at the altar and praying to Jesus. And for all of the loving kindness that everyone has brought. In Jesus' name, amen. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. My chains are gone. I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me. And my
amazing. And his grace has spoken to me, but not only me, but to all of you too. And he's greater and he's stronger than any other.
Amen. Aren't you glad he's your rock, your sword, and my shield? Welcome back to Yes Service. Thank you so much for coming. We're happy you're here. Um, we're going to get ready for offering. So if our helpers could please come, and Brother Ian is going to come up and do the offering thought. Hello. My scripture's in uh, 2 Corinthians 9.10. Now he that ministereth seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food, and multiply your seed sown, and increase the fruits of your righteousness. And in another version, it says, Now he who supplies seed to the sower, and supply and increase, also supply and increase your storage of seed and will enlarge your harvest of your righteousness. And this is saying that when you sow a seed into the offering, it'll multiply and you'll get more multiplied back into you and it'll also help in your righteousness. Let's pray. Jesus, bless this offering. Let it multiply, reach the mission fields. Let it reach all the needs around. Let it bless the church. Let it, let it go farther than just Connecticut. Let it reach all the places around the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Tonight, we have a way to let you let your light shine. Don't forget, next Sunday, September 15th, is National Back to Church Sunday. If it helps you, there are welcome flyers and tracks available on the back rack. 
for you to be able to give out when tracking, ministering to souls, talking to your family and coworkers. But let's let our light shine, spread the news, and let's pack the house of God next Sunday. Amen? Amen. And don't forget, today is the last day to sign up to volunteer and or bake for our annual tag and bake sale, which is held on Saturday, October 5th. If you have not signed up yet, we still need more help. All day and evening times are in need of more volunteers. So take a sign-up form today to volunteer your time and or your baking skills. Forms are available at the kiosks in the church foyer and outside of the gift center. Or if you're on the email list, you can sign up on the link that you receive. So don't forget, tonight is the night to sign up for that. And then also, our cross program is starting back up on October 15th. Um, It meets every Tuesday evening at the church from 7 to 8.30 to help kids that need help in school. So to enroll your child, please pick up and return an application at one of the kiosks. Again, those are in Bissell Hall and in the foyer. Um, The deadline for applications to start on October 15th is Sunday, September 22nd. However, if your child needs help during the year, be sure to call the youth department. And Sister Carolina is going to come on up and share two more quick announcements. Come and join us for a meatball making frolic on Wednesday, September 18th, 9 a.m. to noon at the Olive Tree. Help us make meatballs for the pasta dinner and enjoy a great time of fellowship with your friends. Sign up after service in the church foyer or in Bissell Hall. Come and meet us that morning. Also, tonight after service, you will be able to purchase a piece of delicious cake um, for $1 in Bissell Hall. Um, We're going to have Brother Noah come on up and get ready to testify, and I'm going to get ready to sing. Good evening. Uh, well, uh, me and my family have been praying for a new house for a while, and we moved in last Saturday. Uh, and my scriptures in Psalm six nine, the Lord the Lord hath heard my supplications, the Lord will receive my prayer. So tonight I'm going to sing a song that I made called Pain Free. And what it means is that as humans we experience a lot of pain in our lives, but once we get to heaven, we'll be pain free. So tonight I'm going to sing a song called Pain Free that I made, and what it means is that as humans we experience a lot of pain in our lives, but once we get to heaven we'll be pain free. Well, here I am, once again, feeling lost, but now and then, feeling hope in your name, trying to cope in my pain, staying strong, at least trying to, well, days are long. So I look to you But now I am pain free Cause I have been set free By the one and only Jesus You've shown me my way Now I have to pay And the only way is Jesus The path is rough But we'll do 
because my goal is to be with you every day I breathe it's my desire to see thee but now I am pain free cause I have been set free by the one and only Jesus you've shown me my way now I have to pay and the only way is Jesus is Jesus is Jesus it's Jesus it's Jesus it's Jesus it's Jesus it's Jesus it's Jesus but now I am pain free cause I have been set free by the one and only Jesus you've shown me my way now I have to pay and the only way is Jesus well now I am pain free cause I set free by the one and only Jesus you've shown me my way now I have to pay and the only way is Jesus Hallelujah. How many are glad that you found Jesus? And I'm going to tell you this because she won't, but she wrote that song. Amen. Isn't it so great to see our young people using their talents for God? And I just, from me to you, I just want to say that I love and appreciate how supportive this church is of our youth. I think it's incredible. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have an awesome youth group. Tonight, Brother Bennett is going to come on up and testify, and then when he's done, Sister Heather is going to come on up, and she's going to get ready to sing. She's going to come on up right now and get ready to sing while he testifies. Hallelujah. It's so great to see everybody using their talents for God. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory, great things he has done. What a great thing he has done in our lives throughout this vacation. When I got the email that I was supposed to share a testimony, I was like, oh, but I shared all my testimonies. But as long as I can breathe, walk, and see, it's a big testimony itself. God has been so good to us. As we already started school, it's my prayer that God will our path so our path will be bright. In Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 13, the Bible tells us that we are the head and never the tail, if only we obey God's commandments. Since this is my first year in high school, I don't know what the school year will be like, but in Philippians 4.13, it says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Amen. <laughs> So the song I'm going to be singing is Good, Good Father. And um, I sang this um, a couple weeks ago in Jubilee. And um, I didn't really share much about it, but then it started to sink in that he is a good, good father. He has done so many things for us that we sometimes don't even recognize. He wakes us up every morning. We're breathing. Our heart is beating. We can see, we can smell, we can hear so many things he's done to us. And that's why he's such a good, good father. I've heard a thousand stories. 
ways of what they think you're like But I've heard the tender whispers of love In the dead of night And you tell me that you're pleased And that I'm never alone You're a good you glad we serve a good good father next we're gonna have jubilee tabernacle choir come up up and get ready to sing and stacy addo is going to come on up before and testify
So my scripture is in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, and it says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. And these are all Jesus' names, which are above every other name, and his name is very powerful because um, Jesus has the Holy Spirit, and we can have the Holy Spirit too.
Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Is he your blessed redeemer tonight? Hallelujah. Jesus is his name. I remember about 30 years ago, that song was on a little red cassette. Anybody remember that? On a little, some on a record, amen. Mine was, and you know what? I just remember the times that even in myself, in my little room with my cassette player, putting that song on and just feeling the presence of God. As a young man, there's no one like Jesus, amen? Jesus is his name, name above all names. Whatever, whatever you have need of, Jesus can meet your need today. Let's just thank God for that today. Thank God for his goodness. What a blessing we've already had in his house tonight, these songs and testimonies. I'm edified tonight. Amen. Amen. You know, the Bible says, uh, you know, the ministry is given for the edification, the building up of the church. Tonight, I feel edified by the body of Christ, don't matter what age they were. I'm edified. I'm lifted up. I'm fed tonight. Hallelujah. By, by young people hearing the word of God and, and the instructions of their teachers and parents and, and running with God's word in their life. I am excited by that tonight. It's so, so wonderful. Hallelujah. Tonight, if you have your Bibles... Would you turn to, got two scriptures you want to share tonight. Uh, starting one, first one is in Matthew chapter 11, verse 30. Matthew 11 and verse 30. And then can someone find Psalms 55, 22? One of you young people, Psalms 55, 22. I'm going to read these two portions of scripture tonight and let the Lord lead us. Praise the Lord. Amen. Is everybody there? Who of you young people has Matthew 1130? Matthew 1130. Do you have it? Come here. Come down here. Bring it down here. Bring it down. Who has uh, Psalms 55? No, that's for the kids. Oh. Yeah, just kidding. Psalms 5522. Who's got it? Come on up here. Right, you read this first scripture, everybody. Matthew chapter 11, verse 30. That's fine, yeah. Thank you. Yep, say, say it one more time. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Thank you very much. Young lady, speak right into that. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Anybody recognize two familiar words in these two verses of scriptures? Common words. Huh? Not, not, yeah, cast. Okay, not cast. Burden. Burden, two common words in this. Let's talk about this. Tonight I want to talk about it's not yours, don't pick it up. It's not yours, don't pick it up. Let's pray tonight. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your spirit and your blessing on us already in this house, God. Thank you that we've been touched by the words and the songs, God, and just the actions of these young people, Lord Jesus. Just as we continue on in your word, just bless us. Let your anointing touch every single one, and those who have needs in here, meet their needs through the preaching of your word tonight. We just thank you in Jesus' name. Praise God. Now, a burden, how many of you know what a burden is? What is a burden? Just give me some uh, for instances. Yes, sir. Something you need to do. A burden is something you need to do. Absolutely. It's something um, maybe your parents give you to do or something, huh? It could be chores. It could be chores that you have. Absolutely. Something somebody gives you to do. A job that is your responsibility to take care of. Somebody else? Okay, it could be something weighing you down as well. Uh, sometimes uh, burdens of other nature get a hold of us, and those things can weigh us down. Absolutely, yes, ma'am. 
A burden is something that could be heavy. It could be something uh, 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 weighing on top of us. Um, we're going to get into talk a co- about a couple of those things tonight. A burden is, a do- is something that you carry. A burden is something that you carry. Sometimes that could be very good, and sometimes that burden could be bad. It could be in a negative fashion. A burden is something that is taken up, and it is carried. Now, God, God has given each and every one of us in here tonight, look at yourself. Can you look at yourself? No, you can't look at yourself. (laughs) Nobody's got mirrors. Can't look at ourselves. But God has given each and every one of us in this house tonight, God has given us our own responsibilities in our life to carry on. Mine is different from yours. Yours is different from the person next to you. But you know this. God has given every single one of us a responsibility to do something according to what he has in our life. We have gifts and we have callings on our lives. We are our own individual because God made us that way. Can you thank God for that? Amen. God did not intend for us to be anybody else. Nobody wants to be Reverend Lawton back, right? I want to be like a couple of you, but no, no. God, God made you exactly who he wants you to be. And nothing else matters but what God has for you in your life. We get caught up trying to be like somebody else, and sometimes that gets us into trouble. Has anybody uh, um, young or old found themselves starting to act or gravitate towards something that wasn't really you, and you realize it, and you're like, whoa, that's not me. Anybody? Yes, absolutely. In, In that same thing, we have our own struggles that we face. We have our own things in our lives that we personally deal with, we wake up with, we work on, the things that God talks to, our, to us about in our life, things that we want to uh, make better in our lives so we can be a better us in God. And it is through God's help that we navigate some of the struggles that we face. It's through God. Tonight I'm going to have my friend Brother Melvin Sanchez going to come down here. One problem <clears throat> that we, f- I'm going to have you stand on this side, okay? One problem that we have, that we face in life, is when we start to introduce things into our life that are, are not ours. Okay? Here's Brother Melvin. This is, this, is, this is what God has for Brother Melvin right here. Inside of this life, inside of this, inside of this person is the gifts and callings of God. It is who Melvin Sanchez Jr. is in this life. There's no other Melvin Sanchez Jr. He is who God made him to be. He's got great parents. He's got a great church, all those things. But he is responsible for Melvin Sanchez Jr. And this here, this is what God gave him to do. It's not too heavy, is it? Not too heavy, right? What do you got just clothes in there? What? Just stuff. It's filled with all sorts of different things. This is his life. But this is the, the life God commissioned this young man to do. Now, can you just do me a favor? Can you walk from here to Brother Bill and back? Go. Ready? Go. Just normal. Yep. Here we go walking in life. This is us. This is who God made us to be. Does it look like the young man is struggling? No. Why? Because he's carrying his own burden. He's got his own things in life that God has blessed him with, that God has given him in his life to do, and it is exactly what he can handle because it was from God. Now, sometimes, sometimes we start to allow other things to come to our lives. We, we're going through our life. Uh, uh, we're starting school. Everyone's back at school now, you young people, back at school. And your mind, if you're not careful your mind will start to get consumed with all things school, okay? Now, that's not a bad thing. That's what you're doing. That's your current focus. That's good. But what happens is this, is we start to think about that class. Um, what's, a, what's, a, what's a subject we struggle in sometimes? Math, okay. Math, perfect, perfect example. What happens is this. We start to think about math. 
And we start to think in our mind, there's no way I'm going to be good at this. We start looking at the papers, we sit in class, we listen to our teachers, and we're like, there's no way I'm ever going to be able to do this. Before we ever get started, we've already defeated ourselves by saying, I'll never do this. Brother Bennett, thank you for your scripture. I'm going to share that later because we know through Christ we can do but what we do, if you can bring me that, one, one of those small ones right there, yep. What we do is we start to worry and we start to say, well, I'm never going to do this. Oh, look at this. I've failed this. I, I got this one wrong. Everybody's going to laugh at me for getting it wrong. And what begins to happen is we start to introduce something that is not intended for us and we start to add this burden to our life. We start to add burdens. Now, now that's just not math. Give me another subject. Science. Oh, man. Understanding the makings of frogs. and I'm like, anthro, arthro, what a pod, what? I don't even know what you're talking about. But see, we get this big science book, and we're like, I am never going to get this. And so our mind, if we're not careful, our mind already convinces us that we are going to be a failure. Our mind starts to tell us things in our, in, in our head and we're like, I'm never going to do this just because I don't know this one part or, or just because it, it looks overwhelming to start just talks to us. And, and if you're not careful, the things that talk to you, if, you're, if you don't correct them, will become another burden upon your life. And so now we have Brother Melvin. Brother Melvin was a good brother, serving Jesus Christ, but he's kind, hey amen. He's like, yes, I am good, amen. But when you start to introduce defeat to your life, and when you start to say, I'm going to fail, and you don't speak the positive things, and you don't, like our brother shared tonight, when you don't look to Christ and trust him that you can make it, you begin to introduce burdens on your life that you were never intended to carry. I walk to Brother Bill again. A little different, huh? Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you. Stay right here. Now, that didn't seem too bad. And sometimes we can, we can make it barely, but you know what? We can make it. But yet we still got all these burdens and heavy weights that you were never intended to carry. God never intended for you to be defeated. That was not what he gave you. He did not give you defeat. He did not give you failure. He did not give you mediocrity. God gave you to be the head and not the tail. Don't let things come to you and tell you you are less than what God made you. Well, I can't be good because of this. I can't be good because of my surroundings. I can't be good because, oh, here's one. It's my teacher's fault. Give me, just, give me another bag. just for that, you get another bag. We can blame everything else but never take responsibility on ourselves. We can blame every situation that occurs, but it's never our fault. It's not my fault I failed. It's not my fault I cheated. It's not my fault I didn't, I didn't study. It's not. We make all these excuses and take on things and heavy burdens. that It's getting a little heavier, isn't it? A little bit. Not too bad, but, but you can feel it now, huh? Not even that it's getting heavy, but that it's starting to just weigh down little parts of you, isn't it? Don't take on things that are not yours. Sometimes, 
It's not us. It's not schoolwork. Sometimes it's the friends that we deal with in school. We love our friends. But sometimes on the playground or sometimes in class or sometimes uh, uh, at the lunchroom, sometimes words are said about you. You may not understand why words are being said about you. And then while people look at you funny and people don't, people don't like you. And so what happens is words that other people say now, word, those words begin to affect you. The words that others say, if you're not careful, those words will bring you down and they will be another burden upon your life. One of the biggest things uh, young people face today One of the biggest things young people face today, yes, it's bullying, but it's this, it's this subtle bullying. It's, this, it's through text, and it's social media, and it's, mm, you don't have the right kind. And you don't have the right, you don't have the right entertainment system. And, and oh, so look at your phone. You don't have the top X phone that I have. And we laugh, but that, that is a pressure on young people that the world has tried to put on them. But by God's grace today, I'm going to tell you, do not put on what God did not intend for you to have. You must know who God made you to be. you got to know who you are in God. You don't have to have anything this world has as long as you have Jesus Christ inside of your soul. Those words become... An extra weight, and we feel our, our self-worth just begin to sink. We begin... <laughs> That's exactly what happens, though. We feel... Now, do that again. Now, try to walk to Bill again. Okay, stop. <laughs> we don't need to see that. Come over here. We laugh, but sometimes this is how young people are trying to make it through school because of words and and stresses and and, and things that they're faced with from their own classmates, and they just want to be friends, and they just want to be loved like anybody else, and so they face these things, and it becomes this extra burden. Now, it's not just schoolwork anymore, and it's not just science, and now, now they're dealing with friends who hate them and friends who ridicule them, and all of these weights cut upon our lives. Put it down. Do not pick it up. One of the hardest things that so many people, and this isn't just young people, this is, this is older too, one of the biggest weights that the burden that's put on us is unforgiveness. See, somebody may do something to you, But you carry unforgiveness and resentment and even sometimes anger. And see, that that, that baggage that if not dealt with, that's going to carry well on beyond uh, middle school. That's going to carry well on beyond high school. If you don't deal with those things, you'll be dealing with them till the end. God did not intend you, intend for you to have that thing in your life. So, it's not yours Don't pick it up. Here's another one. Fred. Fred is Melvin's best friend. You know Fred, right? Yep, see? Fred is his best friend. But Fred has got his own issues. So Melvin's friend is Fred. Fred has his own baggage he deals with. Fred, Fred is facing some issues at home. Fred is facing pressures to dabble into some things that no young person should ever even think about dabbling into. There's some pressures from some older friends of Fred's that want him, that talk about the drugs they did and 
talk about the things they did over the weekend. And, and you say, well, Reverend Lottenbeck, this is just a young eighth grader. Trust me. It's all around eighth grade, folks. Okay? It's all around there. Okay? And so these kids, at a young age, they got to deal with these things. You think you as an adult, you think you can navigate it as an adult? Try being eight in, uh, eighth grade, ninth grade, tenth grade, down, younger, and even older. So here we got Fred. Now Fred comes to Melvin and says, Melvin, you know, Joe Bob wants me to go to the goat over his house. And he said he's going to have some, so he's going to have some weed. And so what happens is now Melvin, because he likes Fred and they, they, they've been in school together for, for uh, four or five years growing up together. But now, now Melvin starts to feel this pressure of somebody else. And so Melvin, it's not just his own things he's carrying that he tries to manage and tries to deal with. But now he, uh, Fred starts to tell Melvin about all his issues and tells, tells Melvin about all his problems that he's going to face. And he's, he tells him about all the trouble he's having at home and tells him about all the lies that he's telling his parents. And, and Melvin's here. He's got to deal with that. And if Melvin don't deal with it, guess what? If you don't deal with things when even friends come to you and friends talk to you, guess what begins to happen? It becomes another burden on your life that now you have to try to navigate with another burden in your life. So now we have, we have the issue of friends and, and our friends talking and, and kids talk and they share things. And now we have to deal with it. Now we got to deal with them telling about how they lie and how, how they cheat and they steal. And, and we're just a Christian and we just be quiet. Or do we do something about it? Can we say something? Can we act upon those things? But we're too afraid. We don't want to be called a snitch. And we don't want to be called, you know, uh, uh, another name and put another, put another thing about us because we're just trying to stand for something good. So we gain access, gain access to another problem in our life that we have to carry. And so what started out as pretty good now, there's a lot more to manage, isn't there? Have you ever had a lot of things to manage? You ever had things in your life that you were managing and deep down you knew this wasn't yours to manage? Sometimes in our lives and even these young people's lives, they're dealing with things and, and, it, and it's put on them, a burden is put on them that is not, not theirs to carry all these words. When you don't deal with things that come to you, if you don't start right and if you don't hear right and you don't talk to God right, all these things will come on you. And, and now, I haven't even, even talked about your own temptations. Now we have our own temptations, and we, we got all these burdens, and we don't deal with the burdens that we carry. And so now other temptations, and we're, we're kind of, we're too weak to deal with the other temptations, the, the temptation to lie to our parents. Lie to our parents, and you know, when they ask, oh, what are you, what are you watching on YouTube, and, 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 and what are you, what are you watching over there, and you, you, you quickly, you quickly uh, tell them something different. Got another, another burden to carry. We lie. Oh, but it's a little just to cover myself. I lie. Just to cover who, you know, what's going on. Just so I don't get in trouble. So when parents ask me something and teachers ask me something, even sometimes friends ask me something and I don't tell the truth, it becomes a burden on us that we now have to carry. God did never intended you to go through life and go through school this way. But it doesn't end there. But now you have other temptations. And now in school they're talking about boys and they're talking about girls and they're talking about a whole other thing. I'm not necessarily talking about you, Melvin. So just, <laughs> I, see, I see his look on his face like, that ain't me. I'm like, amen. Praise the Lord, brother. Give it up right here. <laughs> but now we have other temptations. We got... 
Our, body, our things are changing in us, and now our eyes begin to see things that they didn't see when I was in third or fourth grade. And, 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 and you got to be careful because now you got instant access to certain, certain things, and you got phones and tablets, and you got internet and school. And, and so all these things, all the worldly things are right in front of us. And as soon as you start, if you don't deal with it, as soon as you start to click on something and you bypass the check, like we heard this morning about, you bypass the check of God trying to love you and God trying to protect you but you bypass that and you look with lustful eyes anyways I'm going to tell you this is not what God intended for your life this is not what he intended when God when God saved you God, God took the burden of sin off of your life. He freed you, and he who the Son has set free is free indeed, unless you introduce it back to yourself again. All these burdens, all these things we face. Follow me, Brother Melvin. No, listen to me for a second. Follow me. Let's go get on the bus. It's funny, but this is how sometimes you got to go get on the bus because you're weighed down with all these things in your life and you got to navigate the aisles of school. Okay, this says you think it's going to be impossible. Let's try, to, let's try to sit through class for one minute. Come here, Brother Melvin. Come here. Come on, you having you struggling? You str- come on, come, come try to sit down. This is math class, right here. Can you do it? It ain't easy. Can't do it. No. Okay, come stand back over here. I'll even help you on this one. I know we laugh. I know it's kind of, kind of silly, but we take on baggage. We introduce things to our lives that were never intended to be on our lives in the first place. You young people, you face things that were never intended to be a part of your life. There's not one way you should feel defeated as a Christian. There's not one thing, there should not be one ounce of thought in your mind that I can't do this, I'll never do this. When you're saved, you've got to have faith in God and know God for what God says that you can do all things. Now, there's something that's called, have you ever heard of an invasive species? An invasive species, okay. An invasive species, it's a species of anything, could be plants, could be animals, could be insects. It's something that is introduced into an environment that was not originally in that environment, and it has a negative effect on that environment. The Japanese beetle. Guess where the Japanese beetle came from? (laughs) Good, you're quick. It didn't come from America. How many have ever seen a Japanese beetle? Everybody, right? Almost everybody. But that did not originally come from here in the state, United States. That was introduced a a, a long time ago. But the problem is, this Japanese beetle has no natural predator to it. Now, in Japan, they have a specific wasp that actually attacks this beetle and helps the population. But see, here in America, they don't have the proper species or proper predator to deal with that thing. So what happens is it, it starts to hinder farmlands and starts to hinder crops. And so something that was never intended to be here in the first place is now here and it's affecting crops and affecting how farmers deal with the things they deal with. Why do I say that? Because sometimes we introduce things to our life that God did not intend for you to have a part of your life. God had never intended for you to be caught in sin. 
God never intended for you to feel like you're an inferior and you're a failure. And God never intended, uh, 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 God never intended, God didn't want you to, uh, uh, when temptations come, for you to be weak and give in to temptations. All these things, God wants you to know who you are. You don't have to be like Fred or you don't have to be like anybody else. God wanted you to be who you wanted to be or who he wanted you to be. That's who God is. It's a lot harder now to navigate through life. Now, I'm going to tell you this. It doesn't really matter how heavy any of these things are. It doesn't really matter how heavy they are. Because the longer you walk with that thing, the heavier it's going to become. It's little 16.9 fluid ounces of water. A little less because I had a few sips. This isn't much. We could carry this for a while. But the longer we were to carry it just like this, the strain would get harder and harder on our life. Now, it may be in an hour. It may be in two hours. It may be tomorrow morning. But you're going to find the muscles start to weaken. And what what you thought you could carry, you can't carry anymore. Remember when Brother Nick held up the staff for like three hours? Where's Brother Nick? He's, in the, he's with the baby. That thing started to get heavy, didn't it? At first, he was like, ah, victory, I got this. And then by, why? The longer you carry something, the heavier it becomes. So it doesn't matter that this one's heavier than that one, and, and that one is heavier than that one. And the problem is, the longer you carry it, the more of a burden it's going to be. So I got, a, I got a plan for you. How about we not carry them at all? You see, Jesus, when Jesus walked up to Golgotha, Jesus was carrying something. Jesus was carrying a burden. What was the burden that he was carrying? Jesus carried the cross. And every step that Jesus took with that cross, that heavy burden on his back, was every burden that you would ever have to carry. So some of the things that you face today, when Jesus went up that cross, Jesus died for this burden right here. So Melvin, when you go to Jesus, there's freedom in Jesus, isn't there? Do you feel victory in Jesus when you go to Jesus? Amen. So if you feel heavy burdens and things on our life, we got to go to the one who is the burden bearer. we got to go to the one who already took care of all the burdens the world is going to face so that we do not have to carry one of them. So when you feel something coming to your life, it's time to get down and go to Jesus because it was never intended to be yours in the first place. So when you come to church and you come to the altar and you're praying, God, I've got something, I just feel something, God says, you know what, my brother, I'm going to help you because I love you. Hallelujah. And oh, but I'm in school. I can't pray like that in school. Oh, yes, you can. Because guess where Jesus is? He's wherever you are. So if you're going on the going up the stairs on the bus, you're sitting in science class, wherever you are, Jesus is there to help you. Ah. Now there's, there are some things in our lives Jesus comes to help us with. Then there are things in our lives that God wants us to go get some extra help. Amen? Amen? There's some things that aren't intended for us to be carried on our own. We don't know how to navigate that. But God has set up a system of, of ministers and our pastor and youth leaders. And God has, set up a, God has set up some great things so that you never have to do this by yourself. There's an account in the Bible. It's in 2 Kings. The king of Moab, he was going up against the king of Israel, the king of Judah, and the king of Edom. 
Now, individually, the king of Moab could have defeated them. But when they all unified themselves together, he said this. He's like, whoa, there's no way I'm going to do this. So he, he was defeated himself. Why? Because everyone got together. You know, when you get around the altar and you begin to pray, you know what you're helping do? You're helping to relieve burdens. When you get down on your knees, not just in church, but on Monday morning, on Tuesday morning, when you say, you know what, today, I'm not going to just pray for me. Today, I'm going to pray for Brother Melvin. I don't know what Brother, Melvin's, what Brother Melvin is facing, but I'm going to pray with him because the Lord has laid him on my heart, young person. And you begin to say, God, help my brother. I don't know what he's facing. I don't know what he's going through. But if he's going through anything, help him. And you, yourself, you just help lift a burden off of a young man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just want you to know no matter where you are, if you, if, you got, if you got friends right next to you, look at your friend next to you right now. Say, will you pray for me? Will you pray for me? Not just here at the altar, but would you take time and pray for me during the week? And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pray for you too. Why? Because every time we pray and we take time for God, because this is exactly who God made us to be. God made us to be somebody, to carry, hallelujah, carry the cross, carry the burden of Christ. He said his burden is light. And he said this, the scripture said this, what did we start with? Isaiah, I mean, excuse me. Psalms 55, 22, cast thy burden unto Melvin. Cast thy burden unto the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. How does this feel? My neck doesn't hurt anymore. My neck doesn't hurt anymore. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We'll pray for him before we... No. He's good. Listen. We carry things that are not intended for us to carry. You young people, you, sometimes you carry words of defeat and discouragement. That is not for you to carry. Jesus took all those things and he took them to the cross so that you can be victorious. Don't matter if, it, matter if it's math or science. Thank God. Not only, not only can, are, are, can you be victorious, but God set up a cross program that if, even if you need some extra godly help, God set up things where you can come and get extra help. So you know what? You, will, you never have an excuse to be defeated. God has created victory all around you so that you can be victorious all through this school year. And not just you young people, you older people. You all go through some of the same things yourselves that I just talked about. You don't have to be defeated one day in your life. Well, Reverend Lautenbeck, I wish you told me a couple weeks ago. No, no. You do not have to be defeated. You do not have to carry one ounce of anything that is not what God intended for you to carry. See, it's easy to carry this. It's easier, I'll say that. It's easier to carry this. Why? Because this was from God. And this is our calling. This is our responsibility in God. This is our responsibility to church. This is our responsibility to home. This is responsibility to our neighbor. God wants us to carry these things. But when we start to introduce all these other things, it just becomes this heaviness that is not yours. Let me tell you this. Instead of picking up some of these burdens, why don't we pick up our Bibles? Instead of, instead of picking up some of these weights and some of this baggage why don't we pick up our song, hallelujah. Instead of saying, you know, oh, this is, the, this is baggage of defeat, instead of picking this up, why don't you pick up a song and say, I've got the victory, I've got the victory, I've got the victory, amen. Whatever your song may be, don't pick up something that does not belong to you. Pick up the thing that God intended for you. Thank you, sir. Now, Maybe there's someone in God's house tonight, young or old. And you say to me, Reverend Lautenbach, my burden doesn't seem that light right now. Reverend Lautenbach, I, I'm trying to walk for Jesus, but it doesn't quite seem my 
I've, I've introduced some things into my life that don't belong. I've introduced some things in my life that God did not intend for me to carry, yet I feel it, and I don't feel it light. I feel it heavy on my life tonight. I want you to know, if you come to Jesus and you mean it in Jesus, Jesus will take every ounce of that weight that you carry. Hallelujah. Jesus will take every ounce of that burden that you carry, and you can leave here tonight a different person. You can leave here tonight exactly who God wanted you to be. Can we stand tonight? The Bible says this. It says, cast all your cares on him, for he cares for you. You are not, a, you are not anointed to carry these burdens over here, but God anointed you to carry Hallelujah, the calling and the gifts and the responsibilities of God on your life. That, you have every ounce of strength to carry. Don't let negative talk enter your ear. Don't listen, listen to the gossip. Don't worry about how many likes you get. Don't, don't let those things bother you. Don't fear missing out. Don't, all these things, don't let these things enter your mind. But be confident in God because through him, I can do all things as our singers come tonight. Tonight, if you're here in this house, saved, unsaved, young, young, hallelujah, and you feel you're wearing, carrying weight that does not belong to you. in something that is not yours. Thank you. I feel like tonight, Reverend Lombeck, I don't want to admit it, but I feel I'm carrying something that is, was not intended for me. I don't, want to, I don't want to admit that. I don't want to admit that I've let sin creep in. I don't want to admit that I feel like I'm going to fail. But you feel like you're carrying something that does not belong to you. If you young people, you young people, if that's you tonight, I'm going to ask you, would you come to this altar? If that's you, come. It's all right. You can, if you want to come, come. If that's you, young person. You know what? I feel there's some extra pressure that I'm faced with. And I need Jesus to help me. There's some extra burdens I feel like I'm carrying. That's you, young person. I want you to come. Hallelujah. Maybe there's a temptation that you're being faced with in school. Hallelujah. And you feel like, God, I need the strength to get through this. Come. Be honest to God tonight and come to him. Now, if you're whoever you are in this house, front to back, if you feel you got something to wait, a burden, I want you to come. If you don't feel as light as God intended for you to be, I want you to come down to this altar and let God, let Jesus Christ, the song these young people sing, Jesus' name above all, let Jesus come and help you tonight. If that's you, come. Come, come tonight. Come to Jesus. Let him lift your heavy burden. Let him, let him be the burden bearer that he is in your life. Let him, let him lift off that heaviness, that weight. Maybe it's in your mind or heart, wherever it is. If that's you, let him lift it off of you tonight. Because that is Jesus. Jesus went to the cross to carry every burden that you bear today. Hallelujah. Jesus went to the cross so that the sins that you carry could be forgiven. Hallelujah. And forgotten on the cross. So if that's you come tonight. Hallelujah. The pressures of friends, the pressures of the world, pressures of school and my job. Hallelujah. The pressures of my home. Hallelujah. It's just an extra added weight. If that's you, come to God tonight. And God, hallelujah, God, 
God can do all things for you tonight because he loves you, because he is all powerful. Hallelujah. He can, he can seek and he can save tonight. So we give it to you. Hallelujah. It is not yours. Don't pick it up. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. As we sing tonight, Jesus, come. Hallelujah. Saints, let's just gather around these folks at the altar looking to Jesus for help and guidance. Hallelujah. And deliverance tonight, Jesus. God, hallelujah. If someone's here, oh, deliver them tonight, Jesus. Deliver their soul. Free them, Lord God. Hallelujah. Jesus' name, Lord God, help us tonight, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah.
that out tonight. He's the name above all names. He's your burden bearer. tonight. Thank you so much.